schedule more advancedly. Wow. In this video, we're going to use WP Vivid's migration backup and staging plugin to migrate backup and stage a website. I'll show you how all that works. This is their page on WordPress.org for the plugin listings. I've been using this plugin for a long time. As you can see, my video is right here. Testimony to how long I've been using it. This video is three years old now. And it's a great plugin for what I listed earlier, migrating, backing up, and staging. There are some limits in place because it's a free version. There's also a pro version available where limits are lifted. And you can check that out as well. And I'll reference things that the pro version can do that the free version can't throughout this video. So if we head into any WordPress site and we go to plugins and add new, and we search for WP Vivid. I'm currently working on a local testing site here just for sake of simplicity, but this will work on any website you have as long as you're within the limitations that are set for the free version. So this is what we want right up here. Click on install now. Once it's installed, click on activate. And now we have a whole bunch of options. And these options are broken up into sections. So on the left hand side, we have backup and restore, database snapshots, staging, export and import, image cleaner, and settings. So currently we're in backup and restore, and these are all the options we have in here. And we go to database snapshots, more options. Staging, more options. If you're not familiar with staging, what this allows you to do is create a, an exact replica or a clone of your website in a different folder, and you can edit it and make changes and do whatever you need to that clone of the website. When you're happy with the results, you can push one button, and it's gonna put or overwrite your current live website with what you did on the staging site. Hope that made sense. It's basically a safe place for you to play around with your website and not be afraid of breaking it because it's a clone and your web main website stays unaffected until you've completed your work and you want to push it out to your main site. That's staging. Exporting and importing allows you to export and import posts and pages with images in bulk. And the image cleaner, relatively new feature, allows you to scan through all the images on your website, which allows you to find unused images that are cluttering up your media folder which if you've had your site for quite a while, I bet is a large number of images. Back to backup and restore. This is really the meat and potatoes, backing up and restoring, because I think every single website on the planet should have a backup process because disaster happens and you need to have a backup to revert back to in case something does happen. So here the options are for the free version. You can back up the database and files. You can back up just the WordPress files or just the database. You can do custom with the pro feature, which allows you to add back up specific folders and specific database tables. I just back up everything whenever I do it. You can save them locally, or you can save them to remote storage. Locally would be on your server and your hosting account, which takes up space on your hosting account. If you're okay with that, do it there. I'm not okay with that, so I usually go with a remote backup. I use Google Drive for my websites. I'm gonna click on local, just as an example here. Click on backup now, and it's gonna back up the whole site as we're sitting here. And it'll take longer the more stuff you have on your site. This site's pretty bare. Just has a Astra templated theme that I imported in here. So there's something there. So there's something there, but it's not a big site at the moment. And it's done already with the backup. If we scroll down, we can see the backup is made right here. It shows what happened with the backup. So in this case, it backed up to localhost. It'll show different storage solutions wherever you backed it up. It shows the type as being manual, meaning I actually pushed this button. It gives you a log. So you can see what happened during the backup. And if something went wrong or if it failed for some reason, you can see information about that here. And now we can download this backup or we can also restore it. So whenever we make a backup, say you make it every day, which is pretty smart, or whatever your, your publishing schedule is. So if you schedule once a week, I back up your site once a week after you publish your post. So if you publish on Mondays, do your backups Monday night or Tuesday morning or something like that. So you always have a backup of the latest version of your website. If something goes wrong, you can just press restore right here and it's gonna restore the website. Click this button. Are you sure you wanna continue? Yes. Now it's gonna use that backup that we just made to restore the website. This wouldn't be your use case. You do this when something went wrong and you find a backup that has nothing wrong with it and it will revert back to a working version of your website and then you'll have your website back. It's just that simple. And that's doing it manually. What you really wanna do is have a schedule. To activate a schedule, Click on this checkbox here. In the pro version, you have the option to have incremental backups. What this means is you have the first backup of your site is a full backup of everything. And then every backup after that, it only backs up the new things. So you added a new post and it's new images. It'll just back up those into an incremental backup file, which is all tied together to the original full backup. 
if that made sense. The big benefit of this is that you don't have as much CPU used when you're backing up. Backing up can be quite server intensive. Using incremental backups reduces the server load. Advanced scheduling, also a pro feature. This allows you to schedule more advancedly. Wow. Advanced schedules allow you to back up multiple things at different times. So maybe you want to back up your database on Wednesdays and your website files on Fridays and do full backups on Sundays. You can do that with advanced schedules. If you ever want to know more about any of these features, just click on pro feature colon learn more and it goes through whatever that feature is. Everything you have to know about it, everything you need to know about it. For the free version, you don't have much flexibility for scheduling your backup. It goes at zero o'clock UTC which for you, wherever you live, might be the middle of the day, but you can't change that in the free version. And this also requires someone to visit your site to work. It runs on a cron job. The cron job in WordPress fires when a page is loaded on your website. So even though it's scheduled for zero o'clock, the backup might not happen until three o'clock UTC or five o'clock or 10 o'clock, depends how much traffic your website gets and what time of day it gets that traffic. So it has to have a website visit for the cron job to trigger for the backup to actually happen. You also have these options for scheduling here, more refined options in the pro. You can choose what to back up. I usually do the full backup for the free version. More refined options in the pro. And you can save backups to localhost or web servers. I'm gonna send backups to remote storage. Here's a warning saying you gotta configure it first. Let's do that right now. I'm gonna save changes to make sure that we save the one checkbox we clicked, which was enable backup schedule. Let's go to remote storage first. We want to set up Google Drive. Click on Authenticate with Google Drive. And even though this is a local site, this should still work. All right, authentication is done. Nice green text here saying we're good. In the very first field, we have to name what this remote storage is. I'm just going to call it G Drive. This is for our reference inside the website because you could set up a backup service with all of these if you wanted and then they had to have different names. So you could select which one you want to save to. This is the directory where the backups go. This is the name of the website within the directory. So whenever you back up, this is gonna be the name of the website. You can change this with a pro feature. You can't on the free. Click on add now. And now backups will be saved off site or in the cloud. Now if I went here, click send backup to remote storage, click on backup now. It's gonna to send to Google Drive. Let's log into Google Drive so you can see what that looks like. So by the time I got in here and logged into the folder in the Google Drive, the backup was already here. So it goes pretty quick because the site's not that big. It'll take longer for bigger sites. And every subsequent backup is gonna show up in here. It's gonna be a whole list of backups here. It also shows up on our backup and restore tab, shows up down here, shows as manual, shows Google Drive as a destination. You can click here to download the zip file or restore from the zip file right here on this panel. The auto migration option is pretty slick. It allows you to migrate a site just using a special key. I'll make a separate video for this because it's a little bit intensive, but it's also a super cool feature that I think deserves a separate video. And then you can use that key to migrate a website from here, from wherever it is currently, to wherever it is you want to put it. And this makes migration really easy. Instead of backing it up and restoring it somewhere else, this is just way easier. Under settings, we've got a lot of options for specific settings, more for the pro version. There's advanced settings. We'll scroll through these. You can pause the video and read through these if you want. Most people won't really worry too much about these. Media cleaner settings. Staging settings. And we have debug. This is for contacting WP Vivid support if something ever goes wrong. We also have the logs. WP Vivid support will probably ask for these if something goes wrong. This is the key that we generate for auto migration. You'll see here it says, please paste the key how to get a site key. You get it right over here. And like I said, that's a separate video that'll show you how that works. Premium information here, main WP plugin. If you have main WP, it allows you to manage a whole bunch of websites all from one wet central website. Super handy to have. I've got main WP, I use it quite a bit. And there's a WP Vivid backup plugin for MainWP, which allows you to back up all the sites under your supervision all at once. Database snapshots allows you to take a snapshot of the database. Let's go to settings before we do that. We retain up to six snapshots. 
It's recommended you don't retain too many. You can enable quick snapshot, which adds a button at the main on the main admin bar up here. If I save changes, there's a quick snapshot right there. Most people will not be taking snapshots of databases, nor will they be making quick snapshots of databases. But we'll create one right now. You can leave a comment here to describe what you're doing exactly. Snapshots done. Now we have our database here. This should be something you do if you're messing around in the database, which most people don't do. Most people just need full site backups from the backup restore tab. Database snapshots are usually for developers. Regular folks don't really need that very much. Staging allows us to create a staging site. If I click on create staging, there's a bunch of options here. Asks us where we want to put it. I'm going to put it in WP content. You can put it in a subdomain as a pro feature if you want. This is what it's going to be called. This is going to be the URL of the new website, the staging website. And this is going to be the directory, which is where all the files are going to be. We need a database table here. This is going to contain all the existing database inside this database table on our existing database if we choose this option. We can choose a separate database as well. This is expert setup, just need a database name, username, password, and the host, which is usually localhost. And if you recognize those options, it's because you've installed Web WordPress manually before and you have to enter those in your WP config file. So if you know what those are, you can put those in there. You can also create a new database just for your staging site if you want. As a pro feature, you can exclude certain files and folders. For example, if you have a whole bunch of images on your site that you don't want to have on the staging site because maybe you're not working with the images, maybe you just want to redesign your homepage or change the colors or who knows what, you don't need all the images in your media folder, it will make it a whole lot faster to create staging sites and bring them back to the main site if you don't have your entire media folder transfer over to the staging as well. That is a pro feature. I'm going to click on create now to create a staging site. Here it goes. Should be pretty fast because this site is not very big currently file size wise. The staging site's been created. We can command click or control click on these links to open them in separate tabs. We see this orange bar up here. That's letting us know visually that this is not the main website. So the main website is going to have the customary black bar. Unless you have some kind of a min theme installed on your site, this will be what you see. For the staging site, you see orange. So we can come in here and make whatever changes we want. So if we wanted to, for example, edit this page. Let's change the background image. Hopefully there's something in the media library. There is something. Let's change it to, let's put this one in there. So we want to change the image to that. Now when we revert back to our main site, so when we make the staging live on our main site, it's going to have this image at the top rather than this one. And this is true for all the changes you make. So you can make all kinds of changes. You can have a completely redesigned website by the end of your work on the staging site. And we can come back into here and we click on copy staging site to live, which is actually a pro feature. So we can have a staging site in the free version where we can test out our changes to make sure nothing breaks. Then we gotta come back and do it on our live site and make those changes. And they probably won't break the site either because they didn't break it in staging. So that's your process for the free version. If you had the pro though, just be one click of a button and boom, the new version is live on your main website. A good example is WordPress updates. So you could have an update pop up, but you don't want to update your live site. You're a little bit scared. Maybe you back up your site first in case something happens, or you could also do it on staging. So if nothing breaks in the staging site, chances are it'd be fine to update on your main live server. So that's the reason I didn't update this at the beginning of the video, because I thought I could do it through the staging here, but that's a pro version of WP Vivid Backup and Restore. We're just showing the free version in this video. You can also create a fresh WordPress install as a staging site, which means if you wanted to completely overhaul your website, you'd use this option, you completely overhaul it. When you're done, you would have an option like this, copy this fresh install to the live to overwrite what's there. You got a completely new website and you never had to work either locally or on a different domain name or on a different hosting account. You can do it all on the staging site inside of your current website, essentially. So that's the staging section in a nutshell. Export and import allows you to export and import posts and pages. You export in this tab, you can choose which ones. There'll be a list here. Currently there's no list because we don't have a whole lot of posts and pages on this site. And you can import them here as well. and it's pretty self-explanatory. You can export and import. Image cleaner allows you to find images that aren't being used. 
there are a few images on this site. I'm gonna click on scan here and hit down here. It shows the results of the search and there's a lot of images, 97 of them, five pages of images. And you might be thinking, I recognize this image right here as the homepage image. And you'd be right. If we visit the homepage, we see this image here, this young lady with the writing over top. That's what we see here. Why is that happening? Well, the reason is when you upload any image to WordPress, it creates a bunch of different versions depending on which theme you have installed, just in case you wanna have, for example, the 150 by 150 size, which is this one here. Or just in case you wanna have the 1024 by 486 size, which is this one here. So it creates a whole bunch of different sizes that most people don't even use. If I upload this image to the header here, that's probably the only place I'm gonna use it. I'm not gonna use it as a thumbnail somewhere else in most cases. So this image cleaner here allows you to then find these images that aren't being used. Let's select all these. Go to bulk actions, isolate selected images, click on apply. And now we've isolated those. Go over to isolated media. We see them over here. And then we can select all of them, choose delete select images or delete all images, click on apply. And now those are all gone. If I refresh out here, our header image is still there because it didn't delete the header image, just the ones, the other versions of WordPress made that aren't being used. And here it says, once deleted, images will be lost permanently. Luckily, this is a backup plugin too. The action cannot be undone unless you have a backup in place. So if you found that you deleted the wrong image or wrong set of images, you can just restore your backup. Or you could also unzip your backup on your hard drive, find the specific images and re-upload those. Also works. And then we also have the settings. We saw this earlier, just a bunch of settings for each of the different options we went through in this video. And that's really all there is, even though it's a lot. There's a lot of stuff, a lot of options in the, the WP Vivid Backup plugin. And this is only the free version. The pro version is two or three times larger in the amount of stuff it can do, two or three times more. This is the list of it right here. Pause this video and read through this list and there's even more amazing features. I'll link to this page in the description down below so you can come to this page directly and check out all the features the pro version and the free version have. If you have a large website, it's even worth it for you to just install WP Vivid Backup and use the image cleaner just to find all the images that aren't being used on your site. This website is very bare. If I go to the media, just as a quick example, there are 35 images in here. Each one of these have different versions, which we can see were picked up with the image scan. There are 92, we deleted five already, so there are 97 in total that aren't being used. So we uploaded 35 images. Those 35 are being used in the website or versions of those 35. Another 97 versions are not being used. Imagine on a big website. Imagine a website with a whole ton of images. There's so much space you can save using the image scanner it's a little bit bonkers. So I encourage you to try the free version. Just do a scan, see what comes up as unneeded on your website, and I think you'll be impressed. Check out this playlist right here. It's all about speeding up your WordPress site because you wanna make sure your website's fast. So check out that playlist. And if you haven't done so yet, click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. My name is Bjorn from WP Learning Lab. Till next time, keep crushing it, and I will see you in the next video.